Good afternoon, my conscious co-creators. Welcome to another edition of the Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity. I am very, very pleased that you are here with me today. Ah, we've got a very special show in store for you today. And when I introduce my guest, you'll understand why, of course. And again, just a quick reminder, we are doing our Facebook live stream. Welcome, Julian, tuning in on the live stream along with everybody else. Um, it's great to have you guys listening to us. Just remember, you can always uh, ask questions by just um, posting something in the comments field of the Facebook live stream, and uh, we'll see your comments. And, of course, I will respond or ask our guest. And let me flip around the camera here. Ah, thank you, Brad, for the thumbs up. Always glad to have the love. Um, and so I, I have a little bit of a, a different kind of uh, show in store for you today because my guest, who is Greg Banks, is a New Orleans native and who's described as the saint <laughs> of soul. Yes, we're doing a soul-filled musical show today, right. um, which I'm very happy about. I haven't actually have a musical artist on my show for quite a long time. I've had musical artists in the past, but not for a couple of years. So, Greg, welcome to the Conscious Consultant. Thank now. you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Ah, it's great having you here, brother. Uh, Greg has memorized audiences throughout New York City and around the country, and he was chosen by Delhi Magazine as New York's best emerging artist with his amazing body of musical works and his hit singles, Your Love, Sixteen, and Brooklyn Girl. His phenomenal music is causing a major buzz. He is, uh, his music has been described as an eclectic and unexpected fusion of funk, soul, and rock and roll. Um, Banks' exuberant sound masterfully plays homage to guitar heroes Jimi Hendrix and Lenny Kravitz and the R&B and funk sounds that originated in his hometown. So, uh, Greg, uh, I'm, I'm, I always like to start off just kind of giving people a little bit of uh, guests' backgrounds and kind of how you came to be who you are today. So my, my first question to you, of course, is like, how old were you when you knew that like music was in your blood, that like it was part of your life and you, you had to like um, fulfill that? Well, I was about, about five or six and uh, my mm -hmm. mother, mother actually nurtured it in me. She would uh. play all types of music and I would sit in the back seat and sing along with it. Um, it was one day that my, my stepfather was in the car and she, he looked back and said, do you hear him? He can really do this. He can sing. Uh -huh. And from that point on, my mom made sure I was in um, church choirs and she got me my first instrument, which was a trumpet, and that's where it all started. But oh, wow. the moment that defined it for me was uh, when I experienced Hurricane Katrina because losing everything uh -huh. tangible left me with okay. my gift. Right. You know, it took everything tangible away and it left me with my purpose. So that's the moment that I knew that uh, I needed to do something that would change the world. Wow. Wow. That's great. That's great. And that's, you know, it's so wonderful that your parents actually like encouraged it because there's a, a lot of people, you know, their parents like discourage them from being artists and being musicians because like, oh, you can't make money that way. You know, what kind of life are you going to have? You need to support yourself. And so it, it it's great. I, I love hearing that, that there are you know, people who can recognize when their yeah. children have gifts that are not necessarily what, quote unquote, society's norms of, you know, this is what you need to do to be successful. Right. And that's an interesting perspective because um, up until about age 14, I wanted to be a neurologist. A neurologist? Yeah, really? Yeah. I was actually reading about Ben Carson and reading about all the stories oh. of neurologists and I was listening to John. Hopkins and I saw that it would take about 16 days and I was yeah. like, oh, I'm willing to do that. And then when Katrina came and took yeah. everything away from me, I was like, life is too short to spend it doing anything you don't love to do. Exactly. You know, so from that moment on, I've I been at it. But I come from a big family, uh, oh. nine kids, six boys and three girls. Wow. So nine everybody kids. had their own thing. And, wow. and everybody encouraged me in a special way because no one ever told me to shut up. No one ever told mm. me I dressed too funny. No one ever uh, discouraged me in any way. They all supported me. Wow. And because of that, because I got that support from my family, no one in the world could, could discourage me or tell me, tell me down because wow. I had the strength from inside of my home first. Wow, beautiful. Well, where are you in the, out of the nine kids in I'm the fifth, order? Fifth of nine. Fifth of nine. Yeah. Wow, so you're like right, right in, the in the middle, middle there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow, do, you must have gotten lost sometimes, you know. <laughs> no, I managed to stand out because they yeah? all supported me. Ah. We're all so different, but we're alike. Okay. Know? Yes. 
Who who are you closest to of your brothers and sisters? Why are you gonna do that to me, man? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I just yeah. Like, like, do you like the older ones, the younger ones, or uh, you love them all? I love the older one because he showed me how to navigate the world. Uh, I love the younger one because he allows me to share with him what will share with me. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. All right, great. You you got it, brother. You <laughs> you you know how to see the beauty in everybody. That's right, that's right. Excellent. So so when Katrina hit, it, it, what, did your family everybody survive? Everyone was okay. Yes, yes. Thankfully, we all survived. Okay, good. Um, but we were all separated because, like I said, it's nine of us. So oh. some of us were in Texas. Some were in Florida, some of, some of us were in Mississippi. Oh, uh, so when they relocated you, they didn't keep you together as a family? No, no, no. It, well, we were all in different places when it happened. You know, oh, the, the mayor offered uh, okay. a mandatory evacuation, so we all had to leave. So okay. we were in different places at different times. Some of us were already adults, so um, we kind of okay. were scattered out for, for a couple months. Wow. You know? That must have really been something. It's just initially, like those first few weeks, yeah. I mean, what were you feeling at the time? Well, I was confused. I didn't believe what was happening. Uh, um, and in that moment, I thought my life was over because, because I was in, in 10th grade. Um, uh, okay. I was in a marching band. And I already knew what I was going to go to college for, and all that was, was taken away. So right. I had to reevaluate life much sooner than I probably thought I would have. Right. And in that moment, I said, you know what? The thing that I've been focusing on all my life up until this point is no longer valid. I'm going to be a musician. I had always sang, and I played trumpet for a number of years, mm -hmm. but I, I didn't know that I wanted to spend my life doing that. But then when everything in my life was taken away, that's all that was there. Uh, so that's what I've been doing ever since. And um, oh. I say all the time, I, I've nurtured it in every aspect. I studied it in college. I studied classical voice in college. I oh, studied great. the business aspect of it because I know this is what I want to do. So I didn't nurture right. any plan B. I nurtured A in every aspect Beautiful. of it so I can do different things within the industry itself. And that's great. I mean, you studied the business of yes. it too, which is sometimes what causes a lot of musicians trouble is like mm -hmm. they're really into the music, but then they don't learn those other aspects yeah, yeah. of like the business and contracts and all kinds of stuff. And lots of musicians have gotten basically screwed out of their uh, rightful earnings because they didn't pay attention to the business that's side right, of things. Right. And, uh, and where were, just curiously, yeah. where were you when you made that decision? I was in Natchez, Mississippi. In Mississippi, yes, okay. Uh, because that's, that's as far as our car could get us. It ran out of uh, gas. And, you know, we luckily had relatives there, so that's as far as we could go. But uh, okay. I was sitting in an apartment, a two-bedroom apartment with 19 other people. Um, and I was just laying there, and I was like, wow, this, this, this is real. Like, like, the entire city is flooded. This is real. Wow. And in that moment, I said, uh, if, if I'm going to continue on, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? Because everything that I knew was right. over. So I said, I'm right. going to be an artist. I'm going to invest my time in it because not right. just about making the money, but changing somebody else's life. Yeah. And giving them in their moment of desperation some hope through the words that I share. Yeah. Because I've been there already. Yeah. So I, I saw it as being bigger than a neurologist. I mean, of course, I can help people's minds, but I can help right. their hearts by being an artist. Right, so I, right, I, I'm my right. own type of surgeon. Yeah, you know I, mean? I, I fix up the soul, man. A surgeon of the soul, right? <laughs> yeah. Exactly, right? Yeah, you know, right. the regular surgeons they only work with the body, that's but right. you know, artists we inspire people, and oh, yeah. and that's we deal with the soul. That's right. Um, uh, so so you'd made that decision in Mississippi, mm -hmm. yes. And then uh, I'm just curious: was Keep there asking, ever man. any like bitterness around losing everything, or is it Completely. just you? So oh, there was because yeah. uh, you asked me, did my family survive? Yes. But many friends of mine, yeah. they either were lost physically or they were lost spiritually. Yeah. And that's the worst thing because not many of us sought counseling. We thought we could uh, rectify the problems that we had. But there were things that were so deeply sown that we yeah. had no idea how to, how to fix them. So I saw a lot of people who were physically still here, but right. mentally somewhere. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Know, because they, they didn't have the mother that you know, instilled those values and morals and, and right. a higher power in them. So right. they were lost. You know? yeah. So I saw that happen. And that was the saddest thing because... You know, I remember the day before that we were all sitting in a park and we were sharing our dreams. And mm -hmm. the next day, those dreams were shattered for them. Yeah. You know, yeah. thankfully, I, I, I had another perspective because mine could have also been. Right, right, right. And that really, and, and it kind of goes back to, to sort of what I was saying before. It's really about how we show up, how we respond oh, yeah. to what happens that's to right, us, right? Because right. we don't have control. You that's had right. no control no, over whether, whatsoever. you know, Katrina hit New Orleans oh, yeah. or not. But how you responded yes. to that incident. I'm not even going to call it a tragedy, even though it is a tragedy. Mm -hmm. But it's an incident. It happened. That's, that's the force of nature. Right. But how we show up and respond, mm -hmm. we can either let it destroy us right. or we can let it inspire us or, right. or learn right. how to move in a different direction right. and for you in a sense it was almost liberating mm -hmm. because it took away from you these thoughts of you know oh let me maybe do something that i don't doesn't quite light me that's up right. but, right. but can help me to be successful and now it's like no nah, forget that like this is what's left yes and said someone it can sound crazy it's like yeah you don't have to go through a tragedy to find your light no, no absolutely don't ever think not that, but yeah i'm thankful that 
the foundation was in place because uh, playing the trumpet kept me out of the streets. And somebody said, well, what is the streets? Well, the streets is anything that's not occupying your mind. Right, it's it's right. anything that can lead you down the wrong direction. Right. So I, I knew many people, many peers of mine who were living a certain way. And right. I could have easily had done that had I not had yeah. the trumpet. Yeah. You know, so the trumpet was, was my voice without using words. You know, uh, uh, What I liked the most was that I can manipulate this instrument to sound the voice. Uh, so that, that's what kind of nice. what inspired me. I, I remember getting off of the school bus and just playing down the street. My neighbors would all come out the door. Oh, They'd be standing, looking down the street, waiting for me to come. Oh, you know, cool. They would line up around my backyard and ask me to play a song. And I'm like, okay. Yeah, the Pied Piper oh, of New Orleans, huh? Incredible. But listen, there's so many great trumpeters there. Yeah. So that was an, also an aspiration yeah. to, to be recognized as, as one of the greatest right. at and that. I mean, and growing up in New Orleans, oh, where man. it's like music is just everywhere. Oh, it's coming yeah. out of the walls. The water, I say. Uh, the water, yeah. Oh, yeah man. Beautiful. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. And listeners, you're going to really want to pay attention and listen, because when we come back, there's going to be a little bit of different kind of music playing when we come back from bacon. That's my regular theme music. So everybody, please stay tuned. You're listening to The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, and we will be right back. 